the challenge ahead, it's probably best to start with the consumer base that's likely going to influence much of this change, which are the millennials. Now, there's about 125 million of these folks born between the early 80s and the early 2000s, and they represent about 40 percent of the U.S. population. They're actually slightly larger than the baby boom generation, and we all know how influential that segment of Americans was. We have been able to identify many things that have shaped who they are and how they think to better understand what will resonate uh, with them. Uh, and to motivate their actions. And we found that there are several big themes that are common with the millennial market or the uh, millennial audience segment. First off, the economy is really a big part of what shaped these individuals, most specifically the recession. They're much more concerned with money matters and finances than any other generation of people their age before. They grew up in families where parents are much more likely to discuss home financing around the dinner table. And they actually believe that for them to thrive, they've got to do at least as well, if not better, than their parents in understanding finances and how to manage their own financial well-being. They're also putting off life stages in a way that no segment of their age has in the past. Many of them, as we've all heard, are actually getting married later. And they're putting off even smaller life decisions like getting a driver's license. Technology has profoundly shaped who they are and how they think. It isn't just a part of their lives, it is their life. They are true digital natives. And they live in a life where mobile phones and social now offer the freedom and interpersonal connectivity that you could only once get from getting a license and driving a car. This is a generation of people that self-publish multiple times a day and have less concern over privacy than any generation that's preceded them. All of this technological engagement actually has neuroscientists believing that it's altered the way millennials actually think. So the good news is that it offers people the ability to be able to multitask in a way that they never have before, but it comes at the expense of their attention span. So they have very, very, very little time for a marketer to offer them a message. We have to work a lot harder to get their attention. Breaking through to Gen X and Gen Z is uniquely challenging. We'll need to understand these key motivators if we're going to create the kind of digital experiences that can form deeper relationships with brands of all kinds. For a hundred years, the type of journalism we get is simply determined by two things, technology and economics. That's it, technology and economics. And we're in this phase now where technology economics are just changing everything again. It's my humble opinion that on the web, in the news business, production value is less meaningful than individual voice and authenticity. And that's the world that we'll be moving into in the web social web as well as a smartphone. The new newsroom is very complicated, but I'm going to tell you it's very simple. Data. Every line that you see there is some sort of piece of data that's flowing back to somewhere. It's flowing back to an editor. It's flowing back to a producer. It's flowing back to a um, writer of the story. It's constantly going through the newsroom because that data is telling you what people are interested in, what people want, and it's also telling you how to fulfill different marketing campaigns that you have. It's informing the types of content people you want. It's informing the type of audience that you have. It's constantly flowing through there. Cultures need to change. And if we've done anything at Forbes, we've changed the culture of publishing. And the culture of publishing used to be very top-down, and now the culture of publishing is very audience up, understand the data, and move it on up, and move from there. Now, that type of publishing model, the data does not rule what you do. The data informs what you do. I grew up in the world 40 years ago. We simply did not care what the audience thought. 
it was only about the journalist. Well, it's all very different now. It's all about collecting it very, very differently. It's about producing it very, very differently. Individual brands, building audiences under their own names. You are responsible. You don't need editor after editor after editor. The social web is a, is a self-correcting mechanism. If you get it wrong, someone's going to find out and your brand is dead. If you get it right, people love you and your brand is going to survive. That's what I mean by producing it differently. It's going to be moved into the hands of individual content creators. The most successful people who are working for us now understand the tools of social media and are building audiences. And it's very interesting to me to watch traditional media companies unable to deal with this. They actually prohibit their employees from tweeting or prohibit their employees from doing certain things like that. This is the world that we need to get into because that's the type of, that's the type of content that the audience is respecting when you are actually engaged and passionate about it. And we live in an audience today whether you're generation, not quite generation Z, because they're too young to think about it, but the social audience wants you to be passionate about what you think and passionate about what you do as long as they know what your agenda is. If they know what your agenda is, they're okay with that. And if they can talk back to you, they're okay with that too. I think the greatest challenge for the folks in this room is the authenticity of it all, and the realization that you really don't have any control whatsoever because the audience wants it a very different way. Not spun, not slickly produced, but kind of real and kind of authentic. And I'll go back to a younger uh, age and I have a little bit of a window into this world because my wife works with um, tweens and teen girls and amplifying their voices. And it's very interesting to watch because they're not as much about technology as you'd like to think they are. They want to make a friend. And sometimes that friendship offline is way more important than what they find online. And I read an interesting post the other day that the future of technology for a younger generation is what's going to make them more human, not is what's going to make them more cyborg-like. So it's going to be interesting to see the next great technological thing will be what makes me more of a human being than what makes me able to do more or something like that. Thinking about how our, all of our viewing options have changed and how the audience has changed with it, I actually really don't think how we consume media matters. I really think it's all about the content. But this is, a, this is a group of kids who are watching the Super Bowl, and you can see that every single one of them, the, t the TV's in the foreground, they're all watching it with their devices. They're, they're watching replays, they're looking at stats, one kid's taking a picture of everybody else. But they're, they are together, and that's, that's really what the Super Bowl is still something that these guys wanted to do together. And I don't think that technology is alienating them. It's just enabling them to watch it in a different way. Their experience of entertainment is, it's, it's a shared experience. And, um, and, and, and they're engaged, just as engaged in it as, you know, and perhaps even more engaged than my brother and I were when we were turning the dials on our, on our television set. So what is the common thread here with all of this? Shared experiences. It's, it's, it's the shows that are creating buzz. It's the kids who are watching YouTube videos together. Entertainment is about sharing an experience, whether it's a concert or a TV show or a, going to a movie theater. Why do people still go to movie theaters? It's to have that shared experience. They want to be together. They want to consume entertainment together. We did a little research with our research panel, and 73% told us they watch TV together as a family. You know, this is something, again, people think, oh, technology is alienating people. Oh, you know, it's, it's making people go off with their device and watch it all alone. They're not doing that. They're watching it together still. Uh, another trend that we're seeing, and this is really interesting, this is a growing trend. Uh, again, people don't want to be alone. Uh, they are not buying five television sets for their houses anymore that they, now that they have iPads and phones. What they're doing is they're actually coming back into the living room together. They may be watching different things. I could be watching 
uh, the basketball game on the iPad, you could be watching Breaking Bad on the TV, but at least we're doing it together. 52% told us they had done this uh, with somebody in their home. That is up from 47% the last time we asked this question last year. We asked about what devices are important to children. Actually, the TV is still the most important device. Smartphones a close second, but TV is, 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 a, is a very important device. They like watching shows on TV the best. They wouldn't prefer to watch it on a phone or a tablet if they had the opportunity to watch it on a nice, giant, wall-sized screen. These platforms have absolutely changed um, the way that we consume media. But what do we think this means for the future of entertainment? Boredom is dead. And I would say this to my children, I, I really don't accept that anybody can be bored anymore. Not only can you consume content in all of these different places, but you can create it. And I see that happening more and more and more. I don't like to use my own children as, as a focus group, but, but they will when their friends come over. If they can't play a video game, if they can't watch a movie, they will make a movie. Creativity is everywhere. When you think about the, you know, the, the, the tumblers, gift making, all this stuff that's going crazy crazy. People can't get enough of it. Um, the, the, the best shows are inspiring people to create their own content. So the question is, why aren't you guys posting tips on Chow? Have you made a lyric video yet? So the next big thing can and should be you. How are we to know that one person in this room is not the next Lord, who is here performing on, live on Letterman? You may be sitting in your bedroom at night writing songs. You could be the next Lord. Uh, digital first, man. That's what digital gives you. You have the ability to have original news and break that shit on the digital space. Not on print, not on radio, not on TV. Sorry, no can do. But when it comes to digital, you can own your domain. People live, communicate, entertain, and get information differently today than they ever have. Your ideas have to come big, new, and fast. So the reality is there's a switch that comes on, we find it hard to switch off, where we're just one click away from our inner personal thought, meaning personal expression is a new form of entertainment. And you know that um, and we also know that it's all about transparency. So brands need to think transparency because it's now about the open domain. You're no longer the creator of content, get that out of your noggin, you are a curator of conversations. And what's also interesting is that if you get it right, context still matters, and it matters desperately. So putting content in good places is really important for you. People will make decisions emotionally, and they justify it rationally for every single product, whether it's a $5 bottle of wine, Ooh, that's shitty. $5 bottle of water, perhaps, um, and a you know, $50,000 car, we make the same emotional decisions. So you guys are still running around saying it's all about likes, man. Likes is rubbish. I mean, back in the day before Susan and I could be friends, she'd have to confirm my friend request. That's the skin in the game. But now you can like my shoes, my belt, my bag, my jacket without liking me as a whole. It's diluted. So here come the verbs, dude. It's going to be share, want, purchase, desire. They're all coming at you to determine what your social currency is. Do not wait for the industry to tell you what it is. Determine it per brand. That's very critical for you. Uh, social bad though, KLM Airlines, sorry if you're in the house, but check this shit out. I used to be able to check into my flight by checking out somebody's Facebook and LinkedIn profile. That shit's called stalking. Don't do that. <laughs> and you got this thing here. This is uh, the country of Sweden. This is brilliant, man. They're so confident about their brand, they will give you the keys to their t official Twitter account for a week. That is brand confidence, no doubt. However, I would argue that the world is still completely overwhelming, then it becomes underwhelming, because the sixth largest contributor to stress today is media. You're being hit by 1,900 media messages per day, my dear friends, and it's not slowing down. And what's also interesting is tastes have changed, haven't they? We heard this, and Christy said it beautifully, which is advertising doesn't do what it used to do, man. Contrived in-your-face advertising is now different. Brand presence is the shit. If you can get that right, it really means that you can have this amazing attention economy. You can build advocacy on these new platforms, I kid you not. But keep it simple, man. Da Vinci, this is his greatest quote. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. People try and make things too complicated. It's not what we're looking for on those smart devices. But why I love it as a marketer? I love it because it gives me location, location, location. If you're between the ages of 18 and 27, you're the heaviest check-in culture, which basically means the when, where, and what you're doing is an extension of your social bragging right. Now, why I love it is I'm aware of what people are doing in the context of what they're doing it in, and it's got data soaked. Now, why that's really important is you can't do that in desktop. It's a very different experience. We're going to move away from campaigns and chatter and move into, obviously, conversations. But to do that, you need to think about these three things. Simply stated, can you build reactive experiences? Meaning, instant message means instant response. That's just the world we're in today. Can you also be relevant? As soon as you become a conversational brand, it's no longer your brand. 
So just make sure you're part of that conversation and can you be remarkable, meaning will people talk about you? We've quickly moved away from information to social, but where we're moving to, I kid you not, is the world of context or interest. Call it what you will. We're moving out of these big villages into these little tiny units of space where we can actually hang out with people of like mind and that's places to dwell. And they dwell around subjects of interest. And it comes through curation. And this doesn't just happen with publishers. You guys can do it. Anybody can decide to curate these experiences. Think of fab.com, think of vacationers, think of Jet Setter. What they've done is they've orchestrated these discovery engines for us to feel like we can actually have more time in the day because they've curated these experiences for us. And context is going to matter. Contextual recommendations will be hot over 18 months, I kid you not. So I have a lot of friends in my social network, but guess what? I don't think all my friends have great music taste. But I care about other tastemakers telling me what that should be. So contextual recommendations will be coming outside of music. Participation. We want participation to happen because it means people have more opportunity to talk about our brand. But we have to move away from typing commentary. And what we want to do is want to move to photos, audio, video, and in real time. That means that the real value of the social web and the participation web is actually going to open up for us. Yeah.